I didn't maintain my weight loss when I lost my 187 pounds, 187 pounds back in 2014. You know, I, I stayed on point for maybe about six to eight months, but I didn't do it long enough because I didn't prepare myself for what was to come. Welcome to the Success Fitness Podcast. I am your host, Christian Evans. This podcast is for women and men over 30 who wants to achieve success in their fitness journey. And I'm going to help you do just that. But first, I got to ask you something. Have you lost weight, let's say 5, 10, 50, maybe even 100 pounds? Did the weight come back? Was it a struggle? If yes, then this podcast is for you because we're going to talk about the three key habits that you need to implement this year and the next time you go on your weight loss journey in order to maintain your weight loss. But first, a word from our sponsors. You know what? I've been jonesing for pizza lately, but I'm trying to get better at eating better, not eating out so much, and subscribing to the we got food at home mentality. So I chose to cook what I bought from Sam's. Salmon prices have been so high, but Sam's had it $5 off today. Last week, I found a bag of quinoa there for about $8. Since my vegetable supply of meal prep is running low, I also picked up some fresh broccoli. By the time I realized it, I had cooked everything in my e-cookbook. What to meal prep for beginners? Not not only will you get three recipes for one high protein meal under 600 calories, you will also get a free workout ebook. Get 10% off when you sign up to my weekly newsletter. The link will be in the description and the link tree in my bio. Download your copy today. Welcome back to the Success Fitness Podcast. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to listen to me talk. And today's podcast episode, we're going to talk about the three habits to maintain your weight loss. I'm going to read you an article from eatingwell.com written by Lauren Wicks titled Three Key Habits for Actually Maintaining Your Weight Loss. But before we go into that, I'm going to give you an update about what's been going on with me and my juice fast. So today is actually day 31 and I am down officially 25 pounds, 25 pounds. And I'm proud of that. I am noticing some what I would call non-scale victories. I can actually <laughs> wrap my take my right arm and put it behind my back and touch my left lat, my left left side of my back, my lower side of my back. And I can reach in the in the in the higher parts, you know, just as just as well. I'm noticing I'm having more energy. I am sleeping better and actually I'm lifting heavier. I'm lifting heavier and it's it's not so much surprising to me because being on this weight loss journey again, I can remember being stronger when I was lighter. I can remember being stronger when I was when I was lighter. So this theory of losing strength when you lose weight only if you're not maintaining your strength training exercises, right? That is when that is true or will be true. If you're not maintaining your strength training and you're not strength training at all. You're just doing this cardio, 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 cardio. That's something that I did at one point in time, just strictly just, you know, it's cardio. I was doing like 45 minutes of cardio. And then I jumped it up to like an hour and I would strength train here or there, but it's not like how it is right now. You know, that was almost 10 years ago and I'm, I'm older now, right? I'm older. Uh, I believe I'm wiser and I've made some improvements, but I will talk more about that at the end of the show, at the very end of the show, just like we did last week. So stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. Imagine a non-pharmaceutical performance device that can help you breathe easy, reduce exercise fatigue and shortness of breath, all while improving your cardio performance. It's called the Breather Fit. The Breather Fit is evidence-based, drug-free respiratory muscle training, or RMT for short. It's designed to help athletes of all levels elite military professionals, first responders, and people with physically demanding roles like you to gain an elite performance edge. Unlike most other respiratory trainers, Breather Fit trains both inspiratory and expiratory muscles. The independent dial system allows you to create highly targeted training protocols as well. With over 2 million units sold, Breather Fit is the next evolution in RMT. It was developed from the success of the Breather Health device. It has also been used in clinical applications to help chronic respiratory illness and help patients regain function and quality of life. Simply put, 
The RMT protocol designed to work with Breather Fit means working out more effectively and accelerated recovery from your workout. With Breather Fit, all it takes is 10 breaths for two sets, twice a day, six days a week. You can also record your performance to get useful and timely feedback with the Breather Coach app. Breather Fit is your secret weapon to maximize performance and meet your personal best. With Breather Fit, you work hard, but breathe easy. Use my code FITBREATHE at checkout to get 20% off at pnmedical.com slash product slash breather dash fit. The link will be in my show notes. So what are three habits to maintain your weight loss? I'm going to read them off to you. Number one, making healthy eating choices. Two, self-monitoring your intake. And three, practice psychological coping strategies. I wish I'd have known this when I lost my weight. When I dropped my 187 pounds back in 2014, I had no plan what to do after I hit my goal. I had nothing, nothing in mind, nothing in mind. It was just goal or nothing. Hit the goal and that was just it. I didn't think about what practices that I needed to implement to maintain that weight loss. I didn't I didn't think of anything. I just wanted that number. I wanted that number. And maybe if I would have done some more research and came across this article titled Three Key Habits for Actually Maintaining Your Weight Loss, written by Lauren Wicks at eatingwell.com, then maybe, maybe, maybe uh, I could have done a better job at maintaining my 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 weight loss. But, you know, we we go through things in life to give us lessons and what we can learn from them. But I'm going to break down all three of these key points, making healthy eating habits or eating choices, self-monitoring your nutritional intake and three practicing psychological coping strategies. So I'm going to read this article and it's going to break down each one of those three points, three key habits for actually maintaining your weight loss. And again, I will have this article linked in the description box. So here we go. It's a huge feat to lose 30, 20, or even 10 pounds, but it's a whole other venture to keep it off. About 70% of people losing a low to modest amount of weight gain it all back or at least some in the next two years, according to a 2016 study supported by the Endocrine Society. And this is this is true because when I lost my weight, it it came back and it came back. I don't want to say fast, but because fast can be relative, I just wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention, just thinking that I can get away with what I could get away with, right? So going back to the article, yo-yo dieters, those who have lost and regained 10 pounds at least once, have an even tougher time keeping off lost weight. So how is one supposed to beat the odds and keep the weight off for good? Researchers from California Polytechnic State University sought to find out. So yo-yo dieters, I never knew what the definition of yo-yo dieters were. Yo-yo dieters, those who have lost, have lost and regained 10 pounds at least once. And so I'm kind of curious on how you can classify that as, as yo-yo. Um, because what goes down goes up. And I think that should have been repeated, a repeated process, but, but, but. This is just what the article says. I'm not going to argue <laughs> back to the article. This study published in obesity this week surveyed nearly 5,000 members of WW formerly Weight Watchers who reported losing at least 50 pounds and kept it off for three or more years. The researchers compared this group to a second group of 500 participants with obesity who reported not gaining or losing more than five pounds for at least five years. It's important to note this study was supported by a grant from Weight Watchers International, Inc. All participants were analyzed for 54 weight management, weight management related behaviors. I really want to want to know which those are, um, but we're going to dive more deeper into the into that. You know, what I'm saying maybe they'll, they'll maybe they'll answer it here in this in this article. So, you know, this study was funded by, you know, Weight Watchers or WW. I never knew they they changed their name. Hey, you learn something new every day, right? Back to the article. The researchers found that compared to the group of weight stable individuals that WW members who had maintained their weight loss on average were more likely to make healthy eating choices, self-monitor their intake and practice psychological coping strategies, meaning they were able to stay positive even if they experienced a little weight gain along the way. These behaviors also became 
more a part of their lives over time compared to the second group. So breaking down this article or this paragraph within this article. So the three, the three, the three, the three keys, the three habits that uh, this group of people who had maintained their lost weight practice, healthy eating choices, self-monitoring their intake and, and practice psychological coping, coping strategies is, you know, when I failed on mine, I, I'm hesitant because I don't want to say fail, but you know, when I gained, gained my weight back, you know, was I practicing healthy eating choices? I thought I was. And it's, you have to ask the question is, how was that defined? I'm getting to the age now. I'm questioning more in what the definition of a lot of things mean in regards to who's saying them. It's like, what's your definition of healthy eating? You know what I mean? What's your definition of self monitoring? You know, self monitoring can look very, very different, right? And practice psychological coping strategies. Now, this one I'm looking forward to diving into a little bit more when I finish reading the rest of the article to you, but it is a mental game. All this stuff is just, you know, strictly mental about maintaining your poise. Maintaining your poise even though you may have gained some weight, right? Since I've been on this juice fast, there have been times where, you know, I lose two pounds and I gain a pound, right? And I'm like, how? You know, for various reasons, for ver ver various reasons why I may gain a pound or or two pounds since I'm pretty much ingesting the same stuff, you know, daily. And you have to treat yourself nice. You have to be okay with, okay, you know what? I gained a pound, I gained a pound or two. But even though it's frustrating, you have to, be peaceful with yourself. Don't be so tough on yourself. Just wait the storm out. You know, it could be three days, it could be four days, it could be five, you know, but just wait it out and the body will end up adjusting. The body will end up adjusting. Trust me. Back to the article, making healthy eating choices, quote unquote, was defined as keeping more low calorie nourishing foods and fewer high calorie, highly processed foods in their homes and consuming healthy foods regularly for the purposes of the study. So that answered the question, like, what is your definition of healthy eating choices? So healthy eating choices, low calorie nourishing foods with fewer high calorie, highly processed foods. Right. And it's funny that we talk about making healthy choices and make, and keeping a low calorie nourishing foods is that I just finished my new ebook that uh, hopefully by this podcast, I will have, have the link up. But if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, please, please, please subscribe to my newsletter. I'll have the link in the description box or the show notes and you will be the first one notified. But my new book will be called How Many Calories Should I Eat? How many calories should I eat to lose weight? How many calories should I eat to gain weight? How many calories should I eat to gain muscle? And this is a free ebook because I get asked this question quite a bit about nutrition and calories and intake. And I don't know how to find my calorie intake, my daily caloric intake. Well, I provide that. Well, I don't know how to track my calories. Well, I provide resources for that. So again, that will be in the description box far as for my newsletter. And when you sign up to my newsletter, once it's released sometime this week, then you will be the first notified. So it's a great resource for you. So you can go ahead and know what your daily caloric intake is, because what's the purpose of going on any journey without any strategy? So once you get your daily caloric intake, you will have a better strategy at going forward in your in your fitness journey. So going back to the article, quote unquote, self monitoring represents setting daily caloric calorie goals, tracking their dietary intake and measuring foods. What I just talked about now going to psychological coping strategies, quote unquote, included practicing self compassion, mindfulness and being able to stay positive, even if one's weight crept back up for for a time for those of you who have who have lost weight for those of you who have lost weight and gain weight, no matter if it's five pounds, 10 pounds, or the entire amount of weight that you lost and put some back on. It is tough. It is tough. I've been there with you. I'm currently there with you, you know, right now, you don't feel like yourself in regards to when you 
lost that weight initially, right? You don't you don't feel that that energy that you had, that joy, that self respect or more self respect that you had for yourself then. You're like, how did I let this happen? How did I let this happen? It's like, man, you just gotta let it go. <laughs> you gotta let it go, you know. In in church, you know, it's the saying is, you know, you gotta let go and let God. You have to just let go of that that guilt, let go of that self sabotage and be nice to yourself. You know, nobody nobody knows exactly what's going to happen, you know, the next day. Things happen, life happens, you know, we react differently to certain things. And there's a lot of other different factors going into weight gain. You know, I know mine was uh, I didn't prepare. I didn't prepare for when I hit my goal. I didn't prepare for life after, you know, like, all right. And then what? I was just so happy to reach, you know, 215 that I thought that was it. I'm like, once I reach that, it's cool. And that's it. You know what I mean? Not going to I don't have to worry. You know, I shut that that on switch off in my head about I need to get to this goal. I need to get to this goal. And once I got to it, all right, go, man. Let's turn the lights off and walk out of the building. You know, that was it. I didn't think about anything going forward. And that may have been you, but just know you can do it again. You can do it again. Let's go back to the article. Quote, unquote, people who maintain their successful weight loss, the longest reported greater frequency in repetition in healthy eating choices, unquote, said lead author Suzanne Phelan in a press release. Healthier choices also became more automatic the longer people continue to make those choices. These findings are encouraging for those working at weight loss maintenance. Over time, weight loss maintenance may become easier, requiring less intentional effort. And this is true since I've been on this juice fast going on today is day 31 day 31. Um, and the longest I've ever done it has been 60 days, uh, far as for my juice fast, but the healthier choices, they do become easier. They do become easier. And just flashing back to when I initially, you know, started this journey, you know, 30, 31 days ago. And those first five to six days are tough because it's tough to make those decisions. It's tough to uh, maintain your journey of what you want to do, right? And what your goal is. And it's like, man, I got tough through this. This is hard. Why am I doing this? You know, you have all these voices, you know, in your head, like discouraging, you know, you could be your own worst enemy, you know, not so much an extrinsic factor or anybody outside of you. It's you, you know, you can be, you can be just as harmful to yourself more than anybody else on the outside because who knows you better than you? You know, you're the one who hear those those voices. So a lot of times when I wanted to stop, I wanted to quit or give in to temptations, I had to realize I, I need to do this. This is my life. You know, how much time do I really have? How much time do I really have to have this energy in order to do this? How much time do I really have to have this free space in order to do this? You know, um, and it, and it, and it does, it does weigh on you, but <laughs> put on words, it does weigh on you, but in, in all actuality, you just have to do it. You know, what's, what's your why? Once you figure out your why and why you're doing this, it becomes, it becomes easier. So making those choices every single day to let me drink this juice. Let me drink this water. Let me make sure I work out. Let me make sure I'm, I'm on point. Let me make sure I get to the grocery stores to buy the produce. Let me make sure I juice the produce for my, for my juice. And it does become easier. It, it does become easier from that standpoint of, maintaining, um, you know, your, as far as your, your, your weight loss, even in the midst of why you are on your, your, your weight loss journey. So, you know, making healthier choices, making healthier choices, it does become, you know, more automatic right now, since it's day 31, I'm not as, as tempted. I can be tempted. Don't get me wrong. Temptation hardly ever leaves, but I have a way of processing it now a little bit more clearly, but it, it does become easier. Um, remember when I initially lost my weight, I was working in the kitchen around food all the time. I was the lead cook. And so that has its own, you know, toughness in it, in itself. And I'm still cooking. I'm still cooking for clients. I still got to cook for a client. Matter of fact, right after this podcast, I need to wrap this up <laughs> in a little bit, but, um, you know, just making sure 
you know, you're staying on point and not giving in to temptation because once you give in to temptation, since you know you, who knows you better than you, you know how once you get that little bit of taste of sugar, once you get that little bit of taste of let's say those those extra fat, those carbs or whatever, you have a higher chance of repeating that. Not saying that you will do it the next day, but you increase your chances of doing it. So it's like, why do it? Why do it now? You've been you you've you've been on point this long. Why fail now? Why why give in right now? So it's mental fortitude, it's mental toughness, it's it's a test on you. It's a test on, on yourself. Going back to the article, Phelan also noted that since successful weight loss is is associated with a variety of health benefits, the improved quality of life that participants in the first group may feel likely keeps them motivated to maintain their weight in health. And this is right, too, because when I talked about earlier, almost like getting down on yourself because you didn't maintain that weight loss or you just remember how you felt, you know, during that time of weight loss, it's the feeling it's that feeling good where it's like, man, I feel good. You know, I feel good. And it's, I've been carrying this weight around and it's been a huge factor into me not feeling good, whatever that not feeling good area of your life is or body is in particular for me, it's been my left side. It's been my left lower back. And I've, I've always braced myself when I had to, you know, pick up some dumbbells or pick up my shoes or, you know, just things like that. Um, even a tough, even a tough, a tough job of even putting on my socks, like putting my right leg over my, my left knee, you know, that was challenging. You know, that was really challenging. Now it's less challenging, you know, now it feels natural and I don't have any pain when I do it. So feeling is Dr. Feeling is, 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 is also right. You know, in that, in that regard, not so much he's right, but, um, they noticed what well, she noticed that weight loss is associated with a variety of health benefits that improve the quality of life in the participants. So quality, quality of life is one of those non scale victories that people don't really want to talk about that. We need to talk more about your quality of life, your quality of life. And once you start losing that weight and feeling good again, you're like, I don't want to turn back. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to dive into temptation to, reverse everything that I've, that I've done, especially since I've been feeling so good and my, you know, quality of life is better. And back to the article. The bottom line is at the end of the day, if you can't make your diet a lifestyle, then your weight loss is going to be just as temporary as your diet. Studies show that faster weight loss is no better than losing it slowly. So you shouldn't opt for a quick fix, quick fix crash diet, because it will likely just cause you to crash and burn. So that is the article written by Lauren Wicks at eatingwell.com, three key habits for actually maintaining your weight loss. And again, I will have that in the, the show notes in the description box. So you can go ahead and read it for yourself. I'm really liking this uh, website, eatingwell.com. I've been reading quite a few articles from 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 them off of this site. And uh, if you like more of these type of articles, then just uh just let me know just let me know just let me know but you know this 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 article brings up emotions it brings up clarity it brings up situations of you know my past and things that i did i did not do things i should have done and today it just brings a little bit more clarity. It brings just a little bit more clarity in, in regards to the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Right. Because I got off track. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a plan whatsoever after I hit my, my weight loss goal. So I encourage you to start thinking about one. I encourage myself while I'm talking to you. I encourage myself to have one. I encourage myself to have one, to have a, to have a, a, a plan going forward. And I have to really start thinking about that. You know, if I plan to go 60 days, it's what will, you know, day, what would day one look like after the 60 days and day two and day three and day four, I've always had, I believe a challenge in tracking my calories and my intake, meaning 
I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> you know, it's like the law of it, you know, because it's it's all numbers. All this stuff is all numbers. I read a, a blog post a couple of years ago called um, We Are Numbers. And I will have that in the um, in the show notes just as well in regards to that. But how like a lot of our life just remains about numbers. You know, if you just think about um so many things. It's it's all numbers and mathematical, you know, computations for the most part. But when I'm explaining my, to my clients about weight loss and calories, calories in versus calories out and all that stuff, I just tell them, I'm like, just think about it. Think of your calories as your bank account. Let's just say you have your your daily your daily caloric intake is eighteen hundred calories. So you have eighteen hundred dollars. And you don't have to spend all of that. You don't have to spend $1,800 all in one day. But if you do, you're in the red, you're in the negative. So more or less, that's the the correlation, how I communicate about uh, calories, you know, and I have to start thinking about day one after day 60, you know, day two after day 60. What is that going to look like? I need to be a little bit more sharper in regards to my meal prep and just like how I can prep these juices and these smoothies and all these different things like that. I need to do a better job at, at doing that, you know, going, going forward. And that is, you know, example, the first, uh, the first tip, you know, maintaining, you know, a healthy eating choice, maintaining healthy eating choices. What does that look like? You know, I just need to meal prep a lot better or even pay somebody to meal prep. Right. Um, two self monitoring, you know, my intake, I have to just make sure that within step one, making healthy eating choices, that the choices that I'm, I'm making and self monitoring, I need to check myself. OK, yes, I can have something, let's say high protein. Right. But is that high calorie? This as well. Is there are there lower calorie options that can keep the same protein intake? Or if not more, you know, and that is part of self-monitoring and three practicing psychological coping strategies is just to be nice to yourself. You know, weighing yourself every day has its benefits for those who are built for it. And if you're not built for it, it's okay because sometimes that scale can make you feel some type of way. But this Renfo scale that I have that I will have the Amazon link in the description, it can track your protein intake, uh, your protein levels, your water levels, your body fat percentage, your BMI. And I look at that just as well as my weight loss, just as well. You know, I can say, and I think it was when I lost, when I initially lost to 20 pounds, I, mean, I think that was last week or the week before my, my water was the same. My water, my water levels in my, in my body, my blood was the same as in day one. So I have to research more on what that means, you know? So there's more numbers that mean something other than just, you know, just the weight. Right. And we're all in this journey all together, right? We're all in this all, all together. We're all, we're, we're, we're in this together and I'm working on doing a better job at, you know, being a little bit more open and, and, and transparent in regards to what, people want to talk about or when they want to talk about it in regards to weight loss. And I think sometimes what would cause me not to talk to people about it, it's the back and forth, right? People ask you questions and then they have the answers to them. So I question, why are you questioning me? What do you want with me? Are you talking to me just to, I don't want to say defy me because I'm not writing a lot of things and I can learn from people. I'm not saying that, but sometimes you run into those who just want to argue with you and go back and forth with you. So I've learned to kind of just stop talking <laughs> because I know me, I'm going to keep going, going, going until I prove my point. And I ain't got time for that anymore, but I'm learning. Those were few and far between. Right. So this assumption of the bad 50%, right. The, the 50% chance that this person is going to talk crazy or 50% chance that this person is going to talk with some sense. I'm always looking at the crazy part. They're going to talk crazy. I'm going to talk crazy to them and I'm going to tell them to keep it moving or shut up, you know, <laughs> and that's not, that's not always the case. So I'm learning how to just calm down. And this is what comes with, you know, this juice fast, a little bit more calmer. I'm I'm a little less likely to get the strap. You know what I mean? And maintaining the quality of life. The quality of life also includes your mental health, right? Your your mental health and 
your 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 ability to 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 process things with without getting so amped up all the time without getting so amped up so i really appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to the success fitness podcast and if you found inspiration in today's podcast then please sign up to my weekly newsletter the success fitness newsletter once you sign up you will get a 10 percent 10 percent discount to my store, successfitnessstore.com. What's on successfitnessstore.com or what's at successfitnessstore.com? I have my hashtag more coffee cups. Now, I just did a podcast, what was that last week? About about uh, coffee, about coffee being a pre-workout, one of the best pre-workouts you can have and post-workout. I have uh, more coffee cups. I also have my more weight beanie hat that I love to work out in being that I got a bald head when I shave my head. It gets cold outside even when it's kind of warm. So I still keep my keep my beanie hat on. It keeps my head warm, especially when I'm working out. I also have my more weight hoodies and shirts. So go ahead and support me by purchasing at successfitnessstore.com with your 10% discount code and and also that 10% discount code can be applied for my new e-cookbook, What's Meal Prep for Beginners. You will not only get three recipes for one high protein meal under 600 calories, it also comes with a free workout ebook. So go ahead and click the link in the show notes in the description and sign up to my weekly newsletter. And once you sign up, be on the lookout. I have a new free ebook coming out. It's a, it's a guide. It's titled how many calories should I eat? Right? So how many calories should I eat to lose weight, to gain weight or gain muscle? And it's a guide that will show you where you need to go in order to get your daily caloric intake and as well as tools to track and how to track and videos on tutorials on how to track. So I'm trying to take care of you the best way I can. And this brings us to the end of another episode of the Success Fitness Podcast. And remember, if any situation is not making you stronger, simply chant more weight, more weight, more weight. Peace out. So as promised, I am going to tell you a little bit more about my my juice fast that's been going on and everything that's been revolved around that last week. I think I spent a lot time, a lot of time, a lot of time, you know, talking at the end of the podcast. I don't want to make it, you know, any longer like an additional podcast, maybe about two or three minutes. I can be long winded at times, but just an just an update of what's going on um, down officially 25 pounds. My goal is 60 pounds, 60 pounds by by May, May 26th. It's my niece's birthday and she's graduating from the eighth grade. So I want to, you know, be down 60 pounds. And if I'm down 25 today, then by this trajectory, I may miss it by 10. And I don't want to set a negative precedent on myself. So with that being said, I'm going to have to adjust and try to, if I can, if I have more control over it, to actually, you know, make, make, make my goal, meet my quota or whatever. And I don't want to get too psyched up. Like, what if I miss it by 10 pounds? What, what happened then? What happened then? I don't know. You know, I'm the kind of person that I like to cross the, cross the bridge. If, and when I come to it, you know, I don't want to set myself up for, for failure in in that regard and get depressed about what may happen. You know, things are 50, 50, you know, the good side of the coin or the heads and the, or the tail or however you want to look at it. And so why concentrate on the 50% that could potentially be bad that you could potentially lose. Why not concentrate on the 50% that you could hit it. You could make the goal or that you just would lose 50 pounds or even 45. But you know, at this rate, some days I, lose weight, maybe about two pounds, let's say every two days, right? Some days I can, you know, I have a, a streak of like three days, you know, two pounds, two pounds, two pounds, but some days it's not. And it gets frustrating, but I've been through it enough to understand that body, the body, my body will plateau at some point in time. And I have to just maintain that. I have to understand that I can't or should not work out as intensely 
meaning 30 minutes of cardio, you know, or 60 minutes of cardio and then 45 minutes of, of weight. And then try to maintain, you know, my sanity, my balance, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Afterwards, the body is going to hold on to what it's going to hold on to. So I have to almost do almost an interval training style during the week, which meaning like I may have like one high day, one, one, one day where I go, go highly intense, high, highly intense as far as workouts. And then I may just kind of just cool down and then just maybe only do like just 40 minutes of just weights, just, you know, somewhat light, moderate fires for me. I like heavy reps. I like high reps and, you know, just off and on. So I can't just be fully intense, you know, five days a week and expect I can't say expect weight loss, but based off of the information and the data that I have, because I do weigh myself every single morning, every single morning, every single morning. But I am stronger. Um, I've been doing some rack presses, going back to rack presses. Like my goal is still a 405 pound bench press, at least by my birthday, at least by. And normally when I do rack presses, it's difficult. It's difficult um, because I'm trying to get my left side to act right. <laughs> it was a play on words to get my left side to act right. Um, my left shoulder, my left tricep, but through this weight loss, I can honestly say my shoulder is feeling better. My left tricep is feeling better. And I do feel stronger on this side. And yesterday when I was doing my rack press, I got up to rack presses. I got up to four Oh five and it went up clean. It went up, it went up clean. It went up clean. So with that being said, I'm stronger when, when I'm lighter. So, you know, 25 pounds is, is, is good, but I still have a ways to go, a ways to go. And as stated in this podcast earlier about maintaining, you know, your weight loss, when you do lose weight, I didn't maintain my weight loss when I lost my 187 pounds, 187 pounds back in 2014. You know, I, I stayed on point for maybe about six to eight months, but I didn't do it long enough because I didn't prepare myself for what was to come. I didn't think about, and then what? I didn't think about, you know, how do you maintain it? You know, I just really literally thought as silly as, as it, as it, as it may sound is that, Oh, once it's off, it doesn't be off. It just stay off. You know, I can eat how many cookies I want. I can do that. That is so not true. And I am living proof um, of if you don't have a plan afterwards, then you increase your probability of of gaining the weight of gaining the weight back. But I'm also a living testimony that if you did it before, you can do it again. If you did it before, you can do it again. Peace out.